Right, welcome back. Let's get straight into it. You might notice the exhausts are missing down there on my shelf. Um, that's this bolt here for the rubber, and then if there are any clamps left, the clamps down at this W-shaped piece down here. Both the ones on this bike were rotted off. Once you've done that, um, there's a big bolt here. I used a size 27 because it's the closest I had, but it feels like there was a bit of slack, so it might be a 26. Take that off. Then release this clamp bolt, which is now in the uh, rust remover over there. And then womp this end of it with a rubber mallet till it starts to come out. If you need help, you can put a giant Allen head in there, but I don't have one that giant. So in order to get this the rest of the way out, I need a slightly different screwdriver. I'm gonna grab a screwdriver. And because we've managed to womp this as far out as we have, can now get that in there. And wiggle it out. When that comes out the last bit of the way, the wheel is going to fall. So I'm going to wedge the hammer under it. That should mean it rolls forward. Or actually goes nowhere, which is just as good. Then once you've got that out, you can lift the brake arm out the way, grab this spacer. That spacer gives the wheel the room it needs to go off of the drive unit to the left. And if my hammer wasn't there, it would do just that. But um, I might need both hands for this. I kind of don't want to drop it, but hold on, let's see what we can do. Oh, of course, I've forgotten one that would be useful. This up here, yeah, it's a 14, uh, holds the other end of the brakes. Right, when you get that one out, now this whole brake assembly is free to get out of the way. Don't really want to bend these hoses too much because they sound like they're already dry rotted to pieces. And then now hopefully, without trapping my hand in anything, there we go, that comes over to the left, the center spline disengages, and once you've maneuvered it past this, back wheel's off. Okay, so your next step is going to be getting all these hoses off for the brakes, getting the ABS sensor out. So. There are eight mils here and one up here. There's also one a bit further up, which you could sneak a tool in and get to, but I'm gonna take this piece off because the head is absolutely gone and I wanna get on it square. And I'm just kind of curious about what's going on under here. So for this, it's I've taken off these three, these two, and this one here, and to take the battery out. I should get this lump of aluminum out of our way. And then we'll be able to see the swing arm. So I'm gonna go and do that now. Now that that brake is out of the way on this side, I've decided to spray the ABS sensor down with penetrant, but not to try and knock it out because ABS sensors have a tendency to snap. So I chase the cable back up here, it goes to this yellow connector, pinch in this bit on this side, and then you can eke the other side, which is attached to this out, stick a screwdriver up it this way to a little uh, clip, push it, that'll pull off, it goes through there, over there and down the swing arm. And while that's going on, I've got the oil draining out of the final drive because we need to check that anyway. Looks like it was in immaculate condition, but better safe than sorry. And so after that, we should be okay to undo the shock and then use our special tool on this side to take the swing arm off and then we'll be able to get a proper look at it. So I'll bring you back in a moment. Back on a different day because not for the first time in my life, I've been stumped by the size of my tool. Um, I forgot that uh, I left my dad with the big set of um, hexes and so safe driving across the country. I bought myself another set. This is a 17mm by the way. Um, I think it's the same as fits in the end of the axle shaft. It is indeed. So I've got one of those now. I've told that this can be legendarily tight so I'm going to break that off off camera. Um, so that you don't see me fall over and chuck a bike on top of myself. 
Turns out not even remotely tight, so uh, probably a good thing that we took it off. Let's sort the other side out now. Oh. Tighter, but not massively so. Not easy to do one-handed while filming. Let me take that out and catch the swing arm as it falls. So I'm of the understanding that this uh, joint here needs to be broken, the shaft pulled out before this uh, swing arm will come out, just the way it needs to manoeuvre out of the bike. So I've taken three of these 414mm nuts off, just going to take the last one off and drop this final drive assembly down with the shock undone. It should um, come free and then we'll be able to get the swing arm sorted. Right, well that was all very dramatic. What you're supposed to have to do is get it apart and this shaft needs to move back a bit so you can use the swing arm to knock it back or you can grab the end of it with something and give it a yank just to disengage the clip from the splines up there what happened in my case is uh, as soon as it was all free the weight of the drive shaft fell it fell in a, a particular way which is away from that hole over there and then the whole lot fell out and i had to catch it and um yeah, I'm starting to understand why the pannier pin is so heavy now, because every part I take off of it weighs a ton. Right, so that's the swing arm. How do we check this for rot? Well, if it's not brand new, it's rotten. <laughs> Probably the best um, advice to fly by on eBay anyway. The answer is, take your tool of choice that has a relatively pointy blunt end, yes, I'm abusing a pair of pliers, and go to town, hitting it relatively hard, all over the spots that look like they might be rusty, so... You hear that? Nice solid metal ringing, nothing rattling around inside. That's a really good indicator. Does it rattle? Go around the thin parts, all around here, around here. If you can, get a good look in here. Send something pointy in because this box section here can rust up against these reinforcements. And just keep. If you prefer, one of these and a screwdriver and eventually you will find a bit that looks like this ta-da this looked perfect from the outside but using the pliers of truth banging into it i went through and the reason you've got to do this is because if you look this was originally relatively thick metal and while in a lot of cases of these the outer skin is still intact and metally what's happened and this one is a, a really good example let's go and get you in there see all that crust water's got inside and it's rusted it from the inside out this is why they snap in half with no prior warning because what happens is water gets inside eats it out it all looks fine from the outside keeps passing mot's and then eventually there's just so little metal left that something happens and usually this part around here on the lower side rots out the two um, arms are not held parallel anymore and snap hopefully nothing awful happens um, the question with this now is and this is one I'm gonna have to take away do we try to cut this out and rebuild it or do we accept that because this is rusty as you can see that there's probably rust inside all the rest of it and fixing one bit is just patching a problem for the future the answer to this question entirely depends on whether anywhere is refurbishing these, whether I could get one from a bike that comes from a whole country, so, you know, a US-based Arizona bike if they're cross-compatible, that's never seen a day of rain in its life, something like that. I'm going to have to take that away, so this is going to be the end of the part here. The real problem is going to be if we can't find one. So if I can't find one of these, this might be what spells the end of the project. Purely because without it, the bike is useless. Um, and the only ones I've seen for sale are really flipping expensive. So it might either be stop to the project or a bit of a pause. And now you know why I've not been sinking too much money into this bike. Um, because there are a few parts of it, the engine being one, this being the other, that can be a total stow, stow shopper. You can shop at stow if you like, showstopper. So there we go. Part ended here. I'll be back with an update as soon as I can. Cheers, everyone.